I welcome all of you to this session where we are going to discuss a little bit about anger. So, let us use this time, you know, to explore within ourselves what anger is. Because you see, there are two ways of knowing something. One is by hearing somebody else and uh, accepting what he says or she says. And the other way is to know the truth by your own experience. And I think the second way is more genuine, more correct. So when we look at anger, see, we see certain manifestations of anger. There is a can be raising of our voice, there can be palpitation, there can be trembling, there can be a desire to strike out, to throw, to break, to scold, to reprimand, to hit. And generally a very, very disturbed feeling which seems to be out of our control. <clears throat> I hope you can relate to what I'm saying. And when we had a discussion about anger with our team members, so when they shared their experience, the experience that some somebody shared was that anger seems to kind of build up and build up and build up and then it trips over and then it cannot be controlled. He said it is like a whirlpool and at that time you are not open to any inputs from anybody or anything. Another possibility of the anger is that you want to avoid it and you want to get out of there. And you don't want to fight because you believe that it will spoil relationships etc. Whatever it does, the consequences of that, you, know, you don't want so. One another action is to is to get out of there. When we try to see what is the commonality, we see that uh, One of the things that happens in anger is that our reasoning is lost. We do not want to understand or think. And especially, we do not want to look from another person's point of view. And we just want to feel in some sense very, very disturbed and therefore to react to that. And one of the commonest feelings in this kind of situation is the feeling of 
something wrong is being done to me something wrong is happening to me or that something wrong is being done by some person x to another person y so this kind of experience of anger in terms of how you perceive it and how you react to it i think this is something that we can identify in ourselves so the premise of anger is that something or somebody is doing something to me and because something is being done to me i need to instinctively in some sense impulsively in some sense react because there is an action there is a reaction and uh, generally a reaction which is impulsive or instinctive it uh, does not you know yield to control you cannot control it so it's like something is coming towards you and you have to to react to do something back if somebody slaps you you have to slap it back this is the kind of now when we take this idea to the animal kingdom when does and when does an animal get angry you see when does a, a snake get angry when does a dog get angry when do they start to bark or growl or to hiss when do they want to strike or hit back hmm when you observe that you often find that they do that when there is a perception of threat that means that when they perceive when they feel as if they are being threatened their survival is being threatened you know when you are going to attack them or when you are going to take away their food or when you are going to take away their children right so this kind of threat perception is what causes them to react or you know act impulsively instinctively so if we translate this into ourselves then we see that our anger also must be connected to a perception of threat or our anger must be connected to a sense of fear now this is what we have to examine in ourselves that we get angry but behind the anger actually is fear but you don't have to accept this because i say so but try to examine deep within yourself you know for example you are sitting in a car and uh, you are going to catch a plane or a train right and you are stuck up in the traffic 
or you know there is a guy in front of you whose car breaks down or he doesn't move or he's too slow hmm? and then you are getting so angry a pa 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 you are you know pushing on your horn and uh, you're getting very flustered and how can he do this and how can he stop in the middle of the street and how can he and all this kind of you see you are very angry see or somebody for example you know he has to go straight but he is blocking your left lane that where you have to turn and you are bam 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 behind him abusing screaming shouting where does this come from it comes from your fear of missing the flight of missing the train of not making it to an appointment or an interview or to meet somebody and the fear of the consequence of that isn't it if you were relaxed and had all the time in the world and you didn't have the fear of anything you wouldn't be angry this is just a simple example but if you see this in your life in other situations you see exactly the same thing now when we go a little bit deeper to this and we say you know fear is the basis of anger you see you know you know you 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 have booked a space in a building and the builder is not giving you the flat on time or he is acting funny he might deceive you he might cheat you you get very angry how can he do like this i want to kill him i paid him all the money where's my flat so where does this come from again the fear of losing money if this fear was not there anger wouldn't be there it's not the other way around you see you can have fear without anger you see we all are going through or have been through this pandemic covid a lot of us have fear of covid you see that we will get it and you know we will die etc or for you know our loved ones but that doesn't necessarily produce anger you see so fear doesn't always cause anger but anger is always caused by fear if we can understand this then we have to examine whether that fear that we have is proportional to the situation you see many times our fear is very disproportionate 
and therefore also our reaction is disproportionate our anger is disproportionate and why is our fear disproportionate because the fear of the current situation you see triggers off certain memories from the past you see maybe sometime you missed the train and that led to terrible consequences and therefore you have an inbuilt fear of you of missing the train or the plane and therefore when that kind of situation even slightly seems a possibility your fear becomes far more than what is called for if we take this line of reasoning a little bit deeper we can also say that not only the current situation triggers a past memory but it also seems to trigger a certain unexplainable fixed pattern of perception within ourselves we don't know where this pattern comes from you see an unnecessary suspicion of somebody an unnecessary sense of terror in a given situation you see for example you might see some people are deadly scared of dogs it seems to them as if the dog will come and attack them or tear them to pieces or what this fear can provoke a lot of reactions panic anger even they go to a house where there's a dog and they can get angry why does he not tie the dog why he leaves the dog for free so this fear can provoke the anger but the fear itself is not explainable even because maybe in their past memory also there was never such an occasion so this fear of the dog seems to come from a place that is deeper than one's past history or memory it seems to be a kind of pattern that is embossed or fixed to a person's very core being and that certain things seem to trigger that kind of experience one would say not even an imagination but a kind of experience of terror or fear or whatever it may be a pattern that the person has experienced all along in his life in many different situations you see i can give you an example you know there is a certain you know apartment that i wanted to rent out so i you know contacted the owner and we made a deal and yes we came to an agreement etc but for every little matter that was so insignificant he would kept he kept on 
calling me for trivial small 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 things you know things of 100 rupee value you know 2 dollars he would call me five times for example a bulb you know i had to replace a bulb you would say what are you doing with the bulb i was so annoyed and irritated with this behavior that i wanted to just explode you know i wanted to shout at him i said what are you doing it was at this point that i started to look within my own self and see where is this irritation anger coming from and i understood two or three things one is that the anger is coming from my perception that this man is doing something to me that he is annoying me he is irritating me he is being unjust to me etc etc or that he doesn't realize the value of my time he doesn't respect my space so the basic formula he is doing something to me in some sense he is the aggressor i am the victim and why is he doing this to me and why why am i allowing this to happen because of the of the fear that he might cancel the contract so i had to be all the time on guard that you know i shouldn't say something to him that he says no i don't want this anymore so there was a fear of losing the contract the apartment etc out of this fear i had a feeling he is doing something wrong to me and i am not able to respond and my anger level kept on increasing and it was at a point where i thought if he's calling me again i don't care i'm going to scream at him it had come to this kind of level so at that point i started becoming more aware of two things number 1 is that he was not doing anything to me it was not personal he was not victimizing me he was just being himself and whatever his pattern was which was probably highly suspicious maybe highly miserly maybe in him also some fear that i might make changes in his apartment that might prove expensive for him or that i will do something else so he had a lot of his own fears behind what he was doing that's what that's what uh, you know um brought about his actions of calling me over and over again so firstly i understood 
that he was not doing anything to me he was just being himself and acting out of his own pattern and his own perception of reality that is the first thing i became aware of the second thing i became aware of is that i was re reacting or responding from my own fear <coughs> my fear of losing the deal of not getting the apartment and when i went deeper and deeper into this fear you know became more aware and aware of this fear i could see that there was a a pattern a perception that something comes very close to me and i lose it that it doesn't materialize you know in my life i could have memory of things that came almost you know to the to success and then poof it was gone maybe it triggered those memories <coughs> but i could also see that this situation not, was not one like that that from all logic the man wanted to go through with the contract but he was acting out of his own insecurities about small small things so once i became aware of my own fear my own panic once i became aware of his actions and his pattern i could have a much more equanimous much more balanced much more reasonable response to the situation and therefore what i did was i called him up and i said to him you know i understand that you are quite you know particular and careful about things and that uh, you may have an experience earlier that people were not careful with your things etc etc but i want to assure you that i am going to treat your house exactly like my own and in fact you will find that when i ultimately leave after the contract period it will be in a much much better shape than what i found it and that every little thing that i replace in your apartment i will keep it very safely in a box and at the end of my stay i will hand over that box to you finally i told him that every renovation that i do in the apartment will be at my expense you do not have to spend anything for it in this way i addressed all of his concerns or what i could perceive were her his concerns secondly i also told him that you know as a doctor and as your friend i would like to advise you with all the goodness of my heart and all the sincerity i have that if you stress yourself so much about these small small things you know which are you know even worse comes to worse the total value of this is just a few thousand rupees that's all that it is it not so much worthy of so much stress 
that you are taking. I didn't say so much stress you are giving me. I didn't say this. Because everyone is concerned about what happens to them much more than what happens to you. So I told him, as a doctor, as your friend, I want to sincerely tell you that if you take so much stress for these little, little things, you will get hypertension. You may get heart problems and what not. So I advise you not to take so much stress on these things. And if you have any issue you want to address, I'm, I will be there for you and I will happily, you know, address your concerns. So after this conversation, the calls have dropped, I can't say completely, but in a major way, that it doesn't annoy me anymore. So, the perception that he's irritating me, that he's annoying me, that he's doing this to me, are all my own perceptions. He's just being himself. And what is significant for him, it may not be significant for me, but it is for him. You see, a few hundred rupees may not matter to me, but it matters a lot to him, whether in reality or in his perception, it doesn't make a difference. So this kind of awareness is very different from suppression or coping with the anger. Suppression means you feel anger, but you don't express it. Or you tell yourself, you should not be angry. While awareness comes from the philosophy or the perception that nobody is doing anything to you. They are just being who they are. And if you get angry, then you have to examine your own perception and pattern. And at the depth of that pattern, what you will see is fear. I believe that fear or threat is the primary emotion of all of us. That every other emotion that we feel comes from threat or fear. Because, you see, we are all basically animals. And therefore, our primary concern is our survival and the survival of our species, which often mean the survival of our near and dear ones. And therefore, this primary survival instinct is what causes the perception of threat or fear. And from this perception comes every other emotion. Even joy. You see, when do we feel joy? or happiness, it's when we get something, when we achieve something, which in some sense antidotes a fear of something else. When we get money, we antidote the fear of poverty. When we get su success, we antidote the fear of failure or the fear of not achieving something. You see? So when something good happens, what it actually does is alleviate fear, isn't it so? You know, when something really good happens, when we celebrate, what are we celebrating, you see? When we say, you know, we are celebrating somebody's 80th birthday, what are we really celebrating? We are celebrating the fact that they are not yet dead. Our greatest fear is the fear of death, the fear of loss of our survival and therefore when you examine any any emotion you find that the basis of all emotions is fear and uh, each one's pattern of experiencing this fear each one's experience of the fear itself is extremely individual 
and therefore each one has his own experience of fear what triggers the fear what is the expression of the fear what is the experience of the fear but the idea is fear itself and it is of this pattern of this experience that we need to become aware and as we get more aware and more aware of this pattern within us we will stop blaming the outside world we will start stop saying he causes me anger he causes me tension he causes me stress because ultimately it's just an expression of our own inner pattern and i said fear is the root cause of anger itself there is always a fear of something that brings up anger and what provokes anger is the threat for example when you are dependent on someone and that someone does not deliver according to your wishes then the consequence is fear and then there is anger see you want your son to do something for you you want your wife or husband to do something or to not do something for you you see because you are dependent on them and on their doing or not doing seems to depend your survival in some sense you see whether it is or not in reality doesn't matter at all it's how you perceive it you see this is the idea and therefore when we when we really start to look at why is my son causing me anger why is my spouse causing me anger then you will see that the root cause of that is the fear of losing something of them doing or not doing something on which your own sense of survival depends now survival may be a very big term to use but if you can understand what i mean and therefore when you examine this pattern this perception that your okayness you can say if you don't want to say survival you can say your sense of okayness depends on what somebody does or does not do then they are doing or not doing is going to provoke fear and therefore anger in you isn't it so if you examine that is it true that your okayness depends on this one or that one then you can become aware of what underlies anger or fear and if you ask yourself this question right now in a situation of maximum anger in your life just just you you uh, recall a situation where you were very 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 angry and ask yourself this question was it there in this situation your maximum fear just ask and see what answer you get so i feel that fear is the primary emotion uh, behind everything but as i told you that in every case of fear anger may not be the expression in the group when we were discussing anger one good question was asked by one of our team members and she said you know if i get insulted by someone then where is the fear here i get angry but there is no fear this was the her question and she went on to express and share with us an incident where she had received a phone call from an anonymous man who was in some way insulting her or abusing her you know one of those crank calls and uh, she was very very angry that how can he do like this and you know this anonymous crank call using abusive language you know maybe you know some kind of very provocative maybe even sexually explicit language might have been used which provoked a lot of anger 
in, in her. And she said, where was the fear here? You know, she, this was her question. So we discussed this aspect and uh, I asked her a series of questions and I said, so tell me about this, you know, this incident about this man doing it. And she said, a man should never speak to a woman in this way. And such men do not deserve to be in society. And uh, I said, why not? He said, well, you know, today he is just verbally abusive. What if he crosses the line? <coughs> what if he does something to a woman that could be abusive? And uh, I said, so what feeling does this produce in you when you imagine this or think about this? And she says, well, it comes down to fear again. The fear of what would happen if that man crossed the line. So again, when we say insult, when we say humiliation, if we, you know, take steps backwards, you know, try to trace it, you know, retrace it to its origin, we shall again come to the experience of fear. And as I told you, each one's fear is an experience that is extremely individual and it's your individual pattern, individual trigger, individual memory, individual imagination that gets triggered off by certain external situations. So I would like to narrate my own experience about anger. The first I would like to say to you is that except for a very, very rare occasion nowadays, in the past years, I would say, I don't seem to be angry at all, at no one, and even at no situation. And uh, behind this feeling of not getting angry, the main word is a kind of acceptance. Accept that, you know, the situation is like this and this person or that person is like this or like that. And uh, not take it personally at all. And to, you know, to see how one can respond to it or how can even try to help that person because obviously this person or has done something unhealthy which has triggered the, the anger in you. So, how can you, you know, be sympathetic to the wounded person who has done this to you and how can you help him? So this is what happens to me nowadays. So I would like to say to you that it was not always like this. Earlier, um, I used to get very angry and uh, only on some triggers and I would like to share with you just one of them. The one of the triggers for my anger earlier, it used to be noise, you know, suppose, you know, I'm in my house and there's a party in the next building and they are making noise and noise and noise and 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night and still the music is continuing. In spite the fact that, you see, the law says at 10 p.m., this noise has to stop. But, you know, they don't obey the law and they don't heed it. They continue seemingly insensitive to the sleep of the entire neighborhood. And this would, you know, provoke a lot of anger in me. Similarly, if I would travel and go to a hotel, you know, and stay there, and sometimes these hotels, they let out their premises for weddings or parties. And then there's a lot of noise, you know, going on till 12, 1, 2 sometimes. And uh, you can't sleep. And this would provoke a lot of anger in me, for example. And uh, what was the main feeling in the anger? This is very important, I tell you. 
the main way in which we can grow the main way in which we can evolve the main way in which we can know ourselves is through these situations that provoke and trigger us this is the best opportunity for our learning and our growth and so i want to share that experience also with you so typically when i would go into a hotel and there would be a lot of this noise going on i would be inside you know tossing and turning and trying to stuff my ears with ear uh, ear plugs and putting pillows on top and trying to sleep and i cannot get the sleep and they are noising and and i don't know what to do you know i feel i i would feel like now i would like to say when i look into it what would i feel i would feel like a victim that they are doing this to me actually they don't even know who the hell i am and which room i'm sleeping but my perception was they are doing this to me you know they are not doing it to me for example they are just doing it because they are insensitive and socially not conscious people basically and they are enjoying themselves and they don't care you see this is one and the second thing i would feel like a victim who cannot uh, respond i don't know i don't have the strength uh, to stop this you see i don't have the strength and therefore i would feel i am being victimized because i am kind of you can say alone in this versus this hotel and versus this party makers and all of that and there's combined strength much stronger than mine and therefore i have no option but to suffer and then i would say i am not going to sleep tomorrow i cannot function properly it's going to be terrible i am going to get a headache i am going to lose my practice i am going to lose my cases or oh, whatever or sometimes you know i would be doing a webinar and there would be a noise i would believe that you know you are going to mess this webinar and it's recording and everything so it would be a lot of anger a lot of fear a lot of victim feeling and this would be all kind of boiling up within me and i wouldn't know what to do sometimes i want to i would lift up the phone and call the front desk and tell them like this and but then sometimes nothing would happen sometimes i would get threatening myself i say i'm going to the police i will not leave you and call and call the police for me and all of this so this was all a big turmoil but then i came to the realization that first of all these people are not doing anything to me number 2 i am not a victim and i am not weak if i want i can do it i can stop this you know their combined strength is is not a deterrent to my taking an action you see so recently i was in a hotel and there was a marriage uh, going on in the hotel and in the next room to me there was a party going on with a lot of noise you know all the marriage people were there and i think in that one one room uh, a bedroom there must have been 20 people making noise till 10 11 screaming shouting you know having a great time so first of all i realized you know it's a wedding and uh, you know they are having fun and it's, it's they are just not sensitive to who is in the next room you so they are all also a little bit drunk you know and so what i did i said well they are not doing it to me and i am not weak you see this is this is my awareness now how do i respond so i went outside the room and i actually knocked the door and i spoke to them in fact the door was even open i think and there were people there and i said listen you are making a lot of noise and i am not able to sleep and i said that with a very calm a very objective demeanor you know it was not i was hey, you are making noise how dare you make no 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 i said listen there's so much noise you can hear it i am not able to sleep that's all i said very simple 
and they said sorry we are sorry and we will try to keep it down so i went back to my room and uh, they were, it, it quieted down a little bit but again very soon you know they got into the same excitement and there was noise again so this time i called the receptionist and i said uh, you know there's a lot of noise here i'm not able to sleep and she said well i will put you through to to the duty manager and he will come etc but it it didn't it was not effective so i phoned again and i said to them listen your duty manager also seems to uh, not be very effective and these people i don't think they are going to stop so my request is that you shift me to another wing of the hotel in which this party is not going on so that i can get sleep at least from 11 11:30 onwards and they said yes we will do that and at 11 11:30 um they came they took my baggage and i went and slept in another wing of the hotel a very peaceful sleep and that was it so well while i left the room to go to the to the other wing i saw the same people and as soon as they saw me they become a little you know their head went down they were a little embarrassed and i looked straight into their eye and i said you know have a nice wedding have a good time and i left you see it was okay and i slept very quietly and uh, neither did i have fear nor did i have a victim feeling nor was i angry with them you see i it was it was absolutely perfect and i had a very sound sleep so you see when you are becoming more aware that they are not doing it to you they are being themselves when you become more more aware that you are responding from your pattern of maybe victim pattern or maybe i am not strong and strong people can do this to me and i am afraid i cannot do anything i have a fear of them maybe if i tell them they could hurt me or whatever your imagination or perception is so when you come from there and when you come from there then fear and anger build up and build up and then there is an instinctive response an impulsive response which is very very uh, counterproductive to both you and to the situation whereas when you become more um, you know uh, neutral in that sense more objective to their per- pattern as well as to your own then you can respond to it in a way that is really really appropriate and optimal so the three things that are important i accepted that they are not doing it to me secondly if i had not responded to them suppose i say no i can't do anything i just have to suffer this then my pattern would have continued my fear would have continued and third point there is and was a proper solution whatever that may be you see now what is the solution number 1 is that awareness that the outside triggers the pattern in you the basis of that pattern is threat or fear and the more we become aware of that the more we become aware that that fear also has a pattern then there is a possibility to dissolve it so the question arises when you are aware that it is not happening to you or people don't do it to you how to change it you see this feeling that this is happening to me cannot be changed you see so what you have to do is to become aware i feel that it is to me but it is not this is the awareness that has come that has to come and then unreasonable emotions go down it is not that we should not have emotions and we should have anger also but the question is whether the emotion is in proportion to the situation 
or it is getting triggered unnecessarily it triggers off some pattern in us some memory some you know deep seated uh, you see um, feelings within us which do not come from the present but maybe past or maybe even past the past you can say and uh, you see the idea that to say that you know i am calm i am peaceful i am meditative nothing affects me this is not, not good at all because this can be a deep suppression and it can affect one's health in a very bad way so it is very important not to deny your emotions not to deny your fear not to deny your anger not to even say that it is unreasonable or out of proportion and therefore it should not be there the answer is to be truthful to yourself and this is what i do what i do for myself is that i don't deny anything you see this is what keeps me alive see the people who hide their emotions who deny their emotions they become very very sick for me when the fear comes up when the anger comes up when the panic comes up i let it come up and experience it to the utmost possible intensity in fact i may even exaggerate it a little bit i just live that moment in that fear and then keeping that fear in front of my consciousness i start to witness it i start to look at it and i start to become aware of it and to become aware that this experience is not coming from this situation but i have experienced it in many situations in the past different kinds of situations and therefore it must be coming from me this kind of awareness is what can heal it and not simply saying no i am not afraid i don't care i am not angry i am a peaceful person this is a sure recipe for disaster in that sense i would say even you know the talk of spirituality you know as a kind of panacea for anger or for fear is not a good idea at all in fact it can be a very big problem you know many religions and many kind of philosophies they say you know anger is not good don't be angry don't hurt anybody you know in hindu they say kaam krodh lobh moh you know kaam means lust krodh anger lobh greed moh attachment these are not good give it up you know don't feel all these things you know this is a very 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 uh, uh bad <laughs> advice <laughs> to give anybody uh, what you are saying to them is don't feel what you are feeling deny what you are feeling you see deny your greed your lust your anger and your you know attachment deny them and this is not going to help at all in fact i believe that we should not deny anything that we feel and yet how do we come to a situation where we rise above all of this it can only be through awareness when you become more and more and more aware you see of attachment where it is coming from not an intellectual reasoning but an experiential awareness then this awareness can dissolve you see you see it can dissolve it can dissolve your all of these qualities and you will automatically you know uh, come away from fear from greed from lust from attachment etc it will be automatic so things should should be a consequence of awareness and not a voluntary denial or avoidance of certain things i firmly believe what i'm saying you see for example you know uh, you say that you know you should not eat this then eat that and eat that and eat that you should not overeat you should not do this you should not do that but i believe you don't have to do or not do anything if you simply 
um, go into the truth of yourself and become aware and aware and aware, then all these things, actions will be automatic. You see, if you come to the purity of your soul, how can you lie? How it is possible? If your intentions are pure, how can you deceive? You see, why would you deceive? So our aim should be to constantly become aware and purify the inner part of ourselves and not through uh, denial. And, uh, you know, so we are conscious at many levels, you see. For example, you know, we say the ego is bad, you know, ahankar, they say ahankar, ego, very bad, very bad don't have it. It's totally, in my understanding, a denial because till we live, all of us will have an ego. It is not possible that we can, it's like saying, you know, live without your liver or live without your your heart or live without your nose. I mean, how it is possible? The ego is an essential part of our being, of our mind, a sense of identity, a sense of you know, importance, a sense of achievement, a sense of name. It's a part of us. Until we breathe, the ego will be there. But if we are able to see that the mind itself is a track in our consciousness and there is a parallel track of spirituality, of universal consciousness, of, you know, a uh, expanded sense of self not the self is limited to this body mind that is born that will die but there is another self a larger self which is timeless and spaceless if you become aware of that self you see through meditative practice then automatically the impact of the ego will significantly diminish you don't have to do it it will happen automatically. So, spirituality itself is a great, great um, kind of, you know, uh, diluting factor. You know, when you, when you understand the impermanence of our very existence, you know, we are fighting for 5 rupees and 10 rupees and 100 rupees and maybe, you know, 100,000 rupees. But, you see, we are going to leave all of this behind. And uh, we are going to go away. This is a rented premises. This earth is, even if you own half of it, you have to leave it and go. You can't take even one needle point of earth with you. You see, if this awareness comes to us, that there is a greater truth than these petty things that we see in our life. You see, a greater reality. Then the effect of these, these temporary things, you know, it uh, significantly uh, diminishes and uh, and then this also is a very very important uh, you know solution to our anger issues so we should all experience all our emotions we should not deny them even anger fear joy lust hatred grief yes everything is to be experienced but we should become aware of it at an emotional level and to aware of our patterns that lead to disproportionate emotions at the same time be aware of a parallel track of infinite consciousness you see of infinite consciousness if you simply right now at this very moment if you close your eyes with me you know and we breathe in and breathe out you know just let's do it right now. And if we become aware of our breathing, just watch our breathing. And in the process of watching the breathing, we say to ourselves, I am not breathing. I am just the witness of the breathing. Breathing is automatic. Can we do that right now? Just watch your breathing. 
Breath is coming in, going out. Coming in, going out. Through the nostrils. Into the lungs. Then out. Just the process. You become a passive observer. Not an active breather. Just a witness. Can we do that right now? Let the body relax. Any thoughts that come to your mind, let them come, let them go. Don't give energy to your thoughts. Don't chase your thoughts. Any emotions, let it come and go. Keep your attention on the breathing. Body relax. Experience that behind the thoughts and feelings there is a silent space. Like the passing clouds, thoughts and feelings pass, the sky remains the same. Can you locate yourself? in that unchanging sky while watching the clouds passing. Let go. Dissolve. Make no effort. Just be. Don't use your mind. Don't think, don't feel. If thoughts and feelings come, just watch them, ignore them. Keep focus on the breathing. Empty, empty, empty. Now, just bring to your consciousness the person that you are most angry with. Let the face of that person come to your consciousness. Let that image be there. With that image, start experiencing your own experience, your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts, your sensations, what's happening in your head, chest, abdomen, hands and feet. With the image of this person in front of you, with whom you are most angry. Experience now. Experience the stillness of your mind. You may not even feel any anger or emotions 
or you may or thoughts whatever there is just watch it now slowly reorient yourself to current reality where you are in space and time it's 5:45 pm on sunday evening let your eyes slowly open feel the sense of peace within you of silence acceptance of yourself first accept who you are accept who the others are accept the situation of this planet of your situation feel a sense of peace and harmony with everything around so as i come to the end of my discussion i hope that i could share some insights with you and uh, we could have a nice journey together wish you really all the all the blessings from the universe may we have peace may we find our peace which is within us may all beings be at peace may all beings evolve into their true nature om shanti 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 Shanti, 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 Shanti. Shanti.